What is going on, Robot Disc Golf? Welcome back to the page. Today, this is kind of the check-in for troubleshooting the putt. This is gonna be the second episode. I'm gonna give kind of uh, the insights from this first week, some of the stuff I learned, some of the stuff I didn't learn, and um, I actually think my putting got better. So we'll, we'll jump into that right now. So basically, those first couple days were tough. I mean, 250 putts is a ton. And you know, doing 30 from 10, 30 from 15, 30 from 20, 30 from 25, then running that back just kind of was a little brutal at times. I found like I was getting tired or I was just walking up doing 10 of the same exact throw. Uh, and just like at the end of that, at the end of those 10, I had some kind of muscle memory, but only for that moment. And when I'd walk back and do the second 10 of the 30, it was like completely different. So to me, I felt like I kind of, I don't know, probably won't repeat that structure just cause it's not repeatable on the course. Like it's good and it taught me a lot, but it just seemed really repetitive for not a good reason. So in doing 250 putts for several days, um, my percentages didn't really go up, but I found the stroke. I found five key things I need to think about that really put me in the place to make every single putt that's within circle one. Am I making everyone? No, but I know that I can, which has done wonders, like one for the confidence and two uh, just for like the actual mechanical execution of every single putt. I know there's something I can do that will get me uh, into the basket, into the into the hole. So let's go over those five. Let's go over those five things. I'm going to share them with, with you all. I know a lot of this stuff has been talked about before, so it makes sense. It's like logical. So the first thing I do when I walk up to the line, I don't know why it's the first thing, but it's the it's the top of my list is I remind myself to kick my foot out. I feel like it creates kind of this momentum backwards and momentum forwards that's in one line. And if that one line is like this, uh, if I kick my leg out this way, the putt's gonna release this way. Okay, so I kick my foot out. Uh, and then the second thing I think about every time is spinning the putt. I always have to remind myself to pop my wrist really need to spin the putt. That's like the first part of this. The second part, like the little sub part of this is that that spin has to be a part of my body movement. It can't be a putt and then spin. That then pulls it to the right or I like throw it to the left. It's like becomes a throw and I lose all of this back and forwards momentum. The third thing I think about is a little bit of baby hyzer. I don't know why, but that just really helps things come out clean. I think a putter, I think Philo Brathwaite said this, but a putter on hyzer is flying straight. It's been, that's been a really good one for my spin release as well, is that since I am a spin putter, it comes out on a baby hyzer and just has this nice straight flying line. Okay, the fourth thing that I think about is keeping everything square. I find that sometimes to overcompensate for distance, I will like go sideways and then lunge which again, removes all kind of stability and all of this one line thing. So if I can like really keep my shoulders as square as possible and push forward, I can still generate the power. It's not like I lose power. It just keeps it on that line. So I really need to focus on keeping my shoulders square, even my hips to a certain extent. I think I do still rotate them a little bit. Like it all makes sense, right? It's just forwards and back. If I'm missing high and low, it's a different thing, but forwards and back keeps it in this range. And then the fifth thing I think about is just following through. I mean, like my shaking hands with the pole is a little bit to the right, but that's still like the right thing for me. Um, so it is kind of a shaking hands with the pole, but it's just in general, a follow through. I need to follow through in order to, in order to get the disc where it needs to go. That's like the final piece of it. So I walk up, I kind of do a little of this, and then I go, okay, pick my foot out, spin the putt, baby hyzer, Keep it square, follow through. Keep my foot out, spin the putt, baby hyzer, keep it square, follow through. And that's, a, that's, a, that's the other thing is, doing 250 putts every time, it was like, I was just walking up and not thinking about it. It was just, can I replicate what I did this last throw? Now I have a full form, pick my foot out, I spin the putt, baby hyzer, keep it square, follow through. It is money every time. Uh, and then I can like kind of come up quicker, remember it all. So I realized I forgot the sixth thing that's actually super important. Um, and it's probably should be number one on the list is uh, slow everything down. Like the calm releases 
I don't know, like the slow releases still were going just as far as when it felt like I was really trying to snap them out there. Every time I was just like, you know, take a chill pill, Daniel, slow it down. Uh, just a smooth little, a smooth little release is when they would just go in, they look really pretty, there's not much flutter to them. So that's something to think about, you know, <laughs> that's like a, probably a lesson in mentality and confidence instead of like trying to muscle these putts in it was just do what you got to do form wise and they'll get there just fine but thanks for watching robot disc golf uh please leave a comment again if you got any tips any suggestions anything you want to see from this series um but yeah man we're just having some fun we're just having fun playing disc golf trying to get better trying to shave some strokes off uh, but yeah there's a robot disc golf <laughs>